Today's daf is daf ayin, and we are in the middle of Samach Tes Ahmed uh, base 69b. The Gemara is in the midst of trying to understand uh, Rabbi Eliezer's opinion. In our Mishnah, Rabbi Eliezer had said that not only the actual doing the mitzvah of the Karben Pesach supersede Shabbos, but also uh, the preparatory actions in order to be able to do the Karben Pesach also are allowed and supersede Shabbos. As he said, you can even carry the animal into the Beis HaMikdash, remove its wart, etc. Various things that you're allowed to do. Um, and and uh, these are Isuri Darabanan, rabbinic prohibitions. Rabbi Akiva, who disagreed, tried to prove it from a teaching that Rabbi Eliezer had taught in regards to um, uh, Haza, the spritzing of the red heifer water on someone who is Tame Mace on the seventh day of bringing the carbon, uh, sorry, the seventh day of their, uh, of their Tahara process uh, of, of becoming Tahar, of, of, uh, after having come in, into contact with a mace, with a deceased person, their seven day Tahara process of becoming ritually pure again, uh, the, the third day and seventh day, they have to have a red heifer water that may chata spritz on them. And when that is spritzed on them, they then beca- that, that, that completes their process. They go to the mikvah and then et, et cetera. So if the seventh day is on the day that they have to bring the carbon Pesach, uh, the, it, it, Rabbi Akiva said, we learn from there that they don't need to, um, they don't need to bring the, uh, they, they, they don't get spritzed. And uh, um, the question is, why would Rabbi Eliezer hold that if indeed Rabbi Eliezer held in our Mishnah, as our Mishnah states, that you're allowed to do things that are preparatory actions even on Shabbos, in order to be able to do the carbon Pesach. So why would you not be obligated to have the red heifer water, the mechata, spritzed on you if you're Tamei Mace, in order to be able to bring the carbon Pesach? So the Gemara had offered on Amun Aleph, on the, uh, on, on the beginning of the daf, uh, the, uh, the idea that he was a gavre lechazi. At this point, he's not obligated in the mitzvah because he's Tamei, so he's not yet obligated in the carbon Pesach. The Gemara proved and said, no, no, no. Uh, he is an obligated person. He's simply exempt. Uh, we said that from somebody who's uncircumcised. So uh, the Gemara said, well, the reason is because Rebbe Eliezer probably follows the opinion that ain't shirk to mezerkan al tamay sheritz. That when somebody is tummy and has not completed their process for tuma, they're not obligated to bring the carbon Pesach. They're not obligated to do that uh, that uh, action to complete their process. In fact, they don't bring the carbon Pesach. They're not even really allowed to bring the carbon Pesach at that point. We can't shecht it for them. Uh, if they already went to the mikvah, if they already le- needed, uh, fit, completed the process, they simply uh, are waiting for the, uh, they're simply waiting for the, for the sun to set. So in that case, since they're waiting for the sun to set, they're allowed to, uh, um, and bring the carbon Pesach. But if they still have an action that they need to do in order to complete the carbon, uh, to complete their, their, their readiness, such as getting the red heifer water spritz and then the mechata spritz, or, uh, to, uh, or, or to go to the mikvah if they, uh, if they come in contact with a dead road in the sheretz, so uh, then, they're, uh, then they're not going to bring the carbon Pesach. And as the Gemara said, and therefore, since, since they are in that state, they don't have to complete their their process, as the Gemara explained. That only somebody that only that which the community has to do, the individual has to do, and the community doesn't have to do it because uh, uh, because the community uh, is not going to be postponed to the second Pesach. So the first per, uh, also is not uh, that that was the explanation uh, of the Gemara, and the Gemara is going to challenge this concept. Masevi. So we ask a contradiction. This is about uh, 10, 15 lines in on, uh, uh, on uh, Samach Tes Amit Beis, uh, 69b. Mesave, the first word on the line is Barishon, and then it says Mesave, we ask a contradiction. Perhaps the only two people that are going to be exempt from, from Kare's punishment for not bringing the carbon Pesach are the ones... Uh, um, uh, um, that that are um, sorry the ones that will be responsible and would be held accountable of Karis 
are the ones mentioned in the Pasuk. Somebody who, the exemption in the Pasuk says if somebody's tummy, there's somebody ritually impure, he can't bring the Karm Pesach, or Bederach or Chalka is far. And therefore, somebody that doesn't have these two exemptions, they are going to have be punished by Karis. What about an Oret, somebody who is uncircumcised? Tame Sheretz, somebody who didn't come into contact with a dead, but somebody came into contact with a rodent, with a Sheretz, Rishar Kalotamim, or any other type of tumor that a person would have, Minayin. How do we know that even somebody like that, who should have made themselves available for the Karim Pesach and didn't, so they are punishable by Kares for not being brought to Karim Pesach? Tamad Loimar Ish. Therefore, the Torah says, Veha Ish, to tell you that any person that could have brought the Karim Pesach and didn't gets punished by Kares. Now, since the Torah is seeking out, uh, sorry, this Bryce is specifically seeking out a teaching to tell us why somebody who uh, came into contact with, a, with the, the Tuma of a, of a Sheretz, a dead a rodent, that is going to be uh, considered Tame and nevertheless is going to uh, uh, be held accountable for not bringing the carbon Pesach. Um, from the fact we mentioned that, means that he is obligated to take care of himself to bring the carbon Pesach. Meaning he right now, we would not bring the carbon Pesach for him. He cannot send someone to bring the carbon Pesach. Because if he could bring the carbon Pesach in his state, so then of course he's held responsible and held liable uh, um, for not bringing the carbon Pesach. He's just like anybody else. Uh, what I have to seek a, a Pesach for him. At Hainu Tar is just like anybody else that's the Alma. From here we can see even though that he himself is not worthy of the carbon pesach right now, he's not in a state that he can bring the carbon pesach because he's tummy. And we're not allowed to bring the carbon pesach for him in this way. Nevertheless, there is an obligation for him to bring the carbon pesach and to take care of himself so that he could bring the carbon pesach. And so we see that he's held liable. So why would Rabbi why would Rabbi Eliezer not say that he needs to have the red heifer water spritzed on him even on Shabbos? We have to have the lace of is and we see that even though that communal obligation, the community, if they were all tummy, doesn't have the obligation to have the red heifer water spritzed on them. An individual would. Ella Amarava, rather Rava said, this is the meaning. Kasava Rabbi Eliezer shechtem vezerkin al tummy sheretz. The truth is, Rabbi Eliezer is of the opinion that even if he's not ready right now to bring the carbon Pesach because he's still tummy, and even though that he still needs to either go to the mikvah or have the red heifer water spritzed on him, the mechata spritzed on him, nevertheless, he can send the carbon Pesach, he can send somebody to bring it for him. Just uh, uh, similarly, somebody who's in the seventh day of the spritzing, of the of the process of becoming tar after coming into contact with a dead person. I, uh, um, however, nevertheless, he can send the carbon, but what does he need to get the spritzing for himself? Not for the carbon. He can send somebody else to bring it to the base of Mikdash for him. He only needs it in order to be able to eat it that night. There is no complete obligation for eating the carbon, even though he's obligated to eat it, but it will not invalidate the carbon if he doesn't eat it. To which Ravad, the Ravada Barava challenges. I'm only Ravada Barava, Larava, wait. But if that's the case, we learned earlier, you're not allowed to shech the carbon Pesach for someone who cannot eat the carbon Pesach. And if you're telling me this person has no way of becoming available to eat the carbon Pesach because he's not allowed to have the red heifer water spritzed on him, and that means that that evening he's not going to be able to eat the carbon Pesach, then, then it, we learned in the Mishnah earlier that you cannot have the red, you cannot bring a carbon Pesach for someone who can't eat it. He said, no, that's talking about someone who physically cannot eat it. This person is available and able to eat it. He simply, he has to fix himself. And that's not enough of an invalidation. He simply hasn't fixed himself. We're on the first wide line at the two dots. So Rabbi Akiva said a general rule. Amar of Yehuda Amarav. Rav Yehuda said in the name of Rav, the halachic of Rabbi Kiva, the halachic is like Rabbi Kiva, this general rule that whatever you need to do for the carbon today, and you couldn't have done it before Shabbos, meaning it's the mitzvah today to do it, that supersedes Shabbos. But what you could and should have done before Shabbos, 
that does not supersede Shabbos. And he said that the halach is like Rebbe Kiva, and in regards to a bris mila, we have the same thing because a similar machlok is between Rabbi Eliezer over there. Rabbi Eliezer says you're not only allowed to do a bris on Shabbos, but even allowed to cut down a tree, to make a fire, to melt metal in order to shape a knife, in order to make a bris. In other words, anything you need, even prep work, in order to make the to do the mitzvah is permissible. And Rabbi Kiva said, no, all that could have been done before Shabbos. Only the mitzvah itself supersedes Shabbos. And, and so we learned like that, Mila Kihagavna, Kalalam Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva said a general rule, that anything that you could do before Shabbos does not supersede Shabbos. Mila, the bris itself, you couldn't do before Shabbos because that's the day, the eighth day is on Shabbos. Shabbos that supersede Shabbos. Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Rav, Rabbi Yehuda said the name of Rav, Rabbi Kiva, there too, the, uh, the statement of Rav was that the halacha is like Rabbi Akiva. Utsricha. And we need it both places that Rav would say the halacha is like Rabbi Akiva. The Iyash mean Agabi Pesach, because if he had said so in regards to Pesach, Hasamahu the Machshire Mitzvah Leidachu Shabbos. Perhaps the reason why the preparatory work does not supersede Shabbos, Mishum the Leinich Mesolel Sholish Esri Brisas. By Pesach, it's not special, in, in, as special as Bris Mila. Because by bris, we're about to say there are 13 times the Torah says bris, a covenant for, for, for uh, uh, the circumcision, for bris milah. So that's special. And you'd think that that even, not only the bris, but even the preparatory work for the bris uh, supersede Shabbos. Whereas avil milah, the nechaz, uh, whereas Pesach, not so. Avil milah, the nechaz, the shalosh, the perhaps it should supersede Shabbos. And therefore, Rabbi Kiva, we have to say that Allah has Rabbi Kiva, even here, that even by bris, that it's it, it doesn't supersede Shabbos. And if I would only say the halach is like Rabbi Akiva by bris, the iyash mi'ina mila hasamu the machshir mitzvah leidachah Shabbos the like a Perhaps I would say it's not going to supersede Shabbos because it's not immediately punishable by karis. Even though the two positive commandments that are uh, that are punishable by karis, if you miss it, uh, by your soul cut off from the source, if you miss it, are bris a circumcision. And uh, Pesach, but nevertheless, Pesach has this little window, and if you miss it, it's punishable by karis. Whereas Bris, even though that there is an obligation on the eighth day, um, uh, the 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 uh, there are all 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 life essentially of this person, they have the ability to rectify it and and avoid the karis. So therefore, perhaps Shabbos, it doesn't supersede Shabbos, but Pesach, which this is your opportunity to avoid the severe punishment of Kares. Maybe it does supersede Sricha, so we have to say that Allah is like a Rekiv in both places, that regardless, you do not have, uh, um, you only have the right to do the mitzvah on Shabbos, but not to do any preparatory work on Shabbos. So we're at the bottom of 69b now, Samach Tesam at base at the Mishnah, uh, the Mishnah is going to introduce to us a Chagiga. And we'll see that there are multiple types of uh, uh, Chagiga. There's a Chagiga, a, a, a holiday offering that comes on the 15th day of Nisan, on the Yontif itself, which can be brought any day of Chag. There's Shalm Simcha Shalomim, a, a peace offering that comes for the joy of the Chag. And there's a specific Chagiga as well that comes... With, along with the carbon Pesach. A Chagiga, a, a Chagiga is Chag, a holiday. Chagiga, the holiday offering, is brought on the 14th. There's a 14th uh, a, a, a holiday brought on a, a holiday offering, a Chagiga offering brought on the 14th day of Nisan together with the carbon Pesach. And when I say together with the carbon Pesach, it's unclear if that means brought at the same time with the carbon Pesach or it means on the same day, but could be earlier in the day. And this is a great discussion in uh, the post uh, uh, not our subject uh, exactly when we bring it, but it's brought together with the Karman Pesach, meaning either on that day or actually at the same time. And the, the relevance would be, we learned earlier, that every carbon that's brought has to be brought be- after the morning daily offering the Tumit and before the a- a- evening daily offering the Tumit. The only exception we saw was the Karman Pesach. And the question is the Chagiga 
in that same exemption because it's together with the carbon Pesach, or no, that has to be brought earlier beforehand. Either way, uh, there is a Chagiga, a, a, an offering brought, but the purpose of this offering, as opposed to the holiday offering, the Chagiga offering that's brought on the 15th as a part of the, the Yantif itself, this one is brought because the, uh, the halacha is, we'll see later, the carbon Pesach, your olive size minimum amount of carbon Pesach that you have to eat, nechel al hasoiva. It has to be eaten when you're pretty full. You're satiated. You're not stuffed where you can't eat anymore, but you're full. You're satiated. So if you're in a small group, maybe 10 people at your Seder, so you have a full lamb to eat, you have enough there to eat your fill and eat one kazayas, one olive size, al hasoiva, on uh, when you satiate. However, if you have a large, a larger Seder, maybe 40, 50 people, you're not going to be able to serve from one lamb in its first year of life at everybody uh, to have a full portion of, of their, their meal. And on top of that, eat an olive size. So uh, um, a, 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 an olive size, a kazayas of, of the carbon Pesach. So in order to get, make sure that everybody's full and they're going to eat their carbon Pesach al hasoiva, uh, um, when they're when they're satiated, you have to bring a chagiga along with it, a, a, a chagiga being the holiday offering, which that would be the main meal, and um, and uh, uh, the carbon pesach would come sort of at the end when you're already pretty full, al uh, hasayva when you're full but not stuffed, and this way that you fulfill that obligation of the carbon pesach being eaten al hasayva when you're already satiated. So the, this Chagiga is really necessary functionally to fulfill the, the Pesach in a proper way. And it really depends on how large your group. If you have a small group, you need it. If you have a large group, you don't need it. So So the Mishra says, when do you bring a Chagiga, this holiday offering, this uh, Chag offering, together with the carbon Pesach? Only on a weekday, on Shabbos. This is not a necessity, so you're not going. To, it's not going to supersede Shabbos. It's not. It's absolute time. Bitahara. Uh, it also is only going to be true if the if you're bringing the carbon Pesach when you are tahar, when you're spiritually ritually pure. However, if it, we learned earlier when the community is tummy, they can bring the carbon Pesach even while tummy. If the majority of the community is tummy, you won't bring a chagiga that way because it's true the carbon Pesach, which is an obligation today. You'll bring it even though that uh, you're ritually impure, your tummy. However, for the Chagiga, there's no necessity to bring it, so you're not going to bring it when tummy. Uvamua, and only if there's a small crowd at your carbon Pesach. So therefore, uh, uh, sorry, there, there's a small amount of food. There's a large crowd. There's a small amount of carbon Pesach per person. So you need the carbon. Pe- you need an ish additional food in order to be able to eat the carbon Pesach when satiated. So therefore, since you're only going to get a small amount at the carbon Pesach, meaning you have a large crowd, and therefore you have a small amount per person, so then you need uh, the Chagiga. However, Abismanshu, Baba Shabbos, however, if the fifth, 14th day of, of Nisan is on, a, uh, is on a Shabbos, and so there's the, you're bringing the Pesach on Shabbos, the Meruba, or there's a lot of food for everybody because you don't have a large crowd at your Seder, Ubetuma. Or if the community is tame, and so the carbon Pesach is coming while everybody's tame, you do not bring the Chagiga along with it because you because they're not absolutely necessary. Now, there's another, there's a distinction, a few distinctions from the carbon Pesach. Chagiga is above minatsoin uminabakar. It can come from large cattle, uh, from cattle or larger uh, or smaller animals such as sheep and goat. Whereas the carbon Pesach can only come from tzon, from sheep or goat. It can come from go- uh, uh, lambs or goats. That's similar to the carbon Pesach. However, whereas the carbon Pesach is only from male uh, goats or sheep, um, the the carbon the Chagiga can come even from female. In our Mishnah's opinion, um, the, the, whereas the carbon Pesach can only be eaten that day, uh, really, that night, um, meaning from the time they shechted it until that e- that evening, and as we'll see later, either till midnight or to the morning, the that's not true in regards to the chagiga. And our Mishnah's opinion, you can eat the chagiga the next day as well, um, and and that that's considered two days today when you shechted it, 
and tomorrow, as well as the night in between. So day, night, day. So the Gemara now ch- just wonders, what, what stirred the, the, the Mishnah to, to bring up the Chagiga right now? We're in the middle of the carbon Pesach discussions. So my Tana, the Tana Chagiga, Tana HaKavasa V'Havasa. So the reason what we learned earlier that inspired the discussion about Chagiga is the fact that we said that you carry it and bringing it. The Leidachi Shabbos, which that does not supersede Shabbos. So we said, oh, by the way, there are other things that do not supersede Shabbos, like the Chagiga. And so we mentioned the Chagiga, which doesn't supersede Shabbos. And this is what it means. When do you bring the Chagiga? When do you bring it? Only when it is on a weekday. But not on Shabbos, when the, the community is tar, not when the community is tummy, when the community, when your group is so large that you're only going to have a little bit to eat. So that's when you bring it. From here we can learn that the Chagiga of the 14th, as opposed to the Chagiga of the 15th, which we mentioned earlier, that's a separate uh, 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 holiday offering, a Chagiga that you bring on the Yantiv itself. The one on 14th, Lav it's not an absolute obligation. It's something that you bring if you need and don't bring if you don't need. Now we're on Ayin Amaral of 70A at the top. The Yisak Adai Tachoyvehi, because if it is an obligation, Tehsi B'Shabbos, then you would bring it even on Shabbos. With Tehsi B'Marubah, you'd bring it even if you have a, a small crowd and a lot to eat. With Tehsi B'Tumah, and you bring it even if the majority of the, uh, uh, the community is Tomei and the carbon Pesach is being brought by Tomei. Tuma, so what? You have an obligation to bring this as well. Since we learn in the Mishnah that that's not the case, it's obviously not an absolute uh, necessity. It's only if you need it, and therefore you don't bring it on Shabbos, you don't bring it in Tumah, and you only bring it if you need it in your group. So why do you bring it in when you have a little bit to eat, meaning you have a large group? As we learn, the reason you bring a Chagiga with the Pesach on the 14th day because that gets eaten first during the meal. In order for the Pesach to be eaten when you are satiated, when you're full. So the end of the Mishnah said, and I mentioned that our Mishnah is of the opinion, that the Chagiga can be eaten not only like the carbon Pesach that night, but it can even be eaten the next day as well, which a carbon Pesach cannot. The Chagiga, which comes along with it, may be eaten, whatever's left of it, the next day. Masnita Delika Ben Tema, and our mission is like the opinion, not like the opinion of Ben Tema. The Tanya, as we have a Brisa that teaches, Ben Tema Oimer, Chagiga Abama Pesach. Ben Tema says that the Chagiga, this holiday offering that's brought together with the carbon Pesach, Harehi Kepesach, it is it has all the rules of the carbon Pesach. And the Gemara is going to ask as we go along all the rules, and it's going to ask about so many of the rules. But yes, at this point it says Kepesach. It is like the Pesach, and therefore it's only eaten that night. It says by day and by night, meaning the day you bring the carbon, the carbon but the, about that day you're not going to eat it anyhow because you have to eat it at night at the Seder. So it's eaten that night. The Chagiga is Chamisha Asar. However, the Chagiga, which is brought on the 15th day, the, the regular holiday offering, the Chagiga of the Yantif, that's eaten for the day that you shecht it, that night, and the following day as well. And you will fulfill the obligation of simcha. That means that generally we have a rule that um, uh, anything that's an obligation, a carbon that you have to bring, uh, uh, you can only bring it from something that has not been dedicated as something else. So if you dedicated this as uh, uh, um, the, the, um, if you dedicated this as the 14th, the, the Chagiga, the 14th day, and never ended up bringing it, you cannot bring it as another obligatory carbon because this has already been dedicated as a carbon. So you can't bring it as another obligatory carbon. So we have uh, three Chagigas that you would be bringing on Pesach, three sort of holiday offerings. The one, the 14th day Chagiga, which comes along with the Pesach only if needed in order to eat the carbon Pesach when you satiate. The, uh, the absolute obligation of the 15th day, uh, the Chagiga of the, uh, the Yantiv itself. And then there's Shalmei Simcha, a peace offering that's brought um, in, in order to, uh, to, to uh, enhance the joy of Yantiv. 
and sort of your your to have a holiday meat um, from a korban. Now that shalmi simcha, that that's not an absolute obligation, and therefore you're allowed to bring it from the the chagiga that had been dedicated for the 14th, but you never brought it. So that's a distinction that the chagiga of the 14th, since it's not an absolute obligation, um, uh, even though you dedicated it, sorry, even though you dedicated it the 15th day when you want to bring a, a leftover carbon, meaning you had dedicated the, a, a lamb for a chagiga of the 14th day, never ended up bringing it. You can now bring it as a shalmi simcha, but you cannot bring it as the Chagiga, the 15th day, which is an obligation and cannot be brought from something that's already been dedicated. My time of the Ventema. So now what's the basis of Ventema that he says that the Chagiga is like a carbon Pesach? Like Rav taught Chia, his, his student and his son. It says in regards to the carbon Pesach, you're not allowed to bring your car, the offering when, it, when you have chametz in your possession. And you may not leave the, uh, the, um, the slaughtering of the holiday of Pesach to the next day. Uh, and you can't leave it over to the morning. Now, what's that talking about? If it's talking about the Pesach, the, the Pesach offering. So it should just say, don't leave over until the morning, HaPesach, or Zevach Pesach. The, the, either just say the Pesach, or say the offering of the Pesach, the Zevach of the Pesach. What did it say Zevach uh, 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 Chag HaPesach? The, the Zevach, the Shechting of the holiday of Pesach. So must be talking about the two different things. Zevach Chag, the Holiday offering, the Chagiga. That's the holiday offering. That's the Chagiga. Ha Pesach, Kamashmai is the Pesach. And the Torah is saying about both of them, do not leave it over to the next morning. So you see that just as the carbon Pesach must be eaten that night and cannot be eaten the next day, so too the the so too the the um, the uh, pe- the Chagiga may not be eaten the next day. Must be eaten uh, only today. Only that night. Well, Rahman Ali Abayla who said nothing more asks in regards to the opinion of Bentema, how far should we take this? Le Bentema and Echala Slia in Echala Slit. This the Torah says in regards to carbon pesach, it has to be eaten roasted on a fire. Is that true for the Chagiga as well? According to what you're saying, that it's the same as the Pesach. Do we also say it has to be roasted? Ki Aksha Rahmana Le Pesach Lalina. Did the totally only compare it that it must be eaten that night and you can't leave it to the morning? Or also in regards to roasting it? A demolish no, perhaps there's no distinction. Tashima. So we'll try and prove that. Come in here. Halayla It said we'll learn later that one of the things you we say, we don't have the four questions this way. The four questions, the way they ate it, did it, they said it when they had the base of Mikdash and they would eat the carbon pesach. So they would ask, why, why is this night different than all other nights? That tonight, so all other nights we eat meat roasted or cooked or baked. And tonight we eat it all roasted. Since it says, Kulo Tzli, Bama Rav Chista, Zudivir Ben Tema. Rav Chista said that's the teaching of Ben Tema that says that not only the Pesach, but also the Chagiga must be eaten roasted. Shmamina. So from here we can prove that indeed, according to Ben Tema, everything, even the, the Chagiga must be roasted. We ask another question. Le Bentema, this that Bentema says that uh, the the Chagiga is similar to the Pesach, cannot be eaten uh, beyond the, tonight. Um, it cannot be eaten. It can only be eaten roasted. Well, what about this halacha? Uh, 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 can it come out of? Does it have to be a lamb or a goat, or or is it allowed to be even a cow? Minabakar, can it be cattle? Or it can't be cattle. Is it allowed to be a female? Or it must be a male like a carbon Pesach. Is it allowed to be in its second year of life? Or it has to be in its first year of life. It may not be second year of life, just like a carbon Pesach must be in its first year of life. Did the Torah only compare it in the halachas regarding the eating? meaning you must eat it that night, you must eat it roasted, 
But in regards to what type of animal, uh, what type of korban, that's not comparable. Or perhaps no distinction, and everything is compared. Tashima will prove it from this. Chagiga Abama Pesach. The Chagiga that comes along with the Karman Pesach. This offering, the, the holiday offering, comes along with the Pesach offering. Hareyuka Pesach, it's the same. And therefore, Baminat Zainim, Veina Bamina Bakar must come from sheep or goat and not from cattle. Baminat Zahar Veina Bamina Kavis has to be a male, not a female. Babash no Savaina Babash Tashana must be in its first year of life and not a second year of life. Veina Nechelis El Eliyot. It can only be eaten that day and night. Velayla that night. Veina Nechelis El Etzli. And it can only be eaten roasted. Veina Nechelis El Nuyaf. And it can only be eaten by people that were pre designated in that group. Now, Man Sham is the Isle, the High Sparrow. Whose opinion is this, Brysa? Clearly, it's the opinion Ben Tema. It's the opinion of Ben Tema. So we can learn from here that he requires everything to be like the carbon Pesach Shmamina. Indeed, that's good proof. We ask further. The Torah says, in regards to the carbon Pesach, you're not allowed to break the bone of the carbon Pesach. You have to eat it down to the bone and not breaking the bone. What about the Chagiga? Are we going to compare it even in regards to that? And why wouldn't you? You just said, according to Ben, ben Tema, everything's comparable. Well, actually not, because it says in regards to this idea of not breaking the bone, ve'etzem, and a bone, lo tishburu, you shall not break bone in it. In it, the carbon Pesach. But the Chagiga, clear, it would, perhaps it, it is excluded from this because it says, boy, 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 or perhaps the limit of in it means if it's a kosher carbon versus a non-kosher carbon, if it didn't work out right, so then you're allowed to break the boat. So we're going to try and prove that. And in regards to trying to prove it, we're going to bring the question about if you find a knife and the, the knife may have been used for a carbon Pesach, or may you want to use it for a carbon Pesach. It's a shechting knife. So then you have to assume that it went to the mikveh and it was uh, it, it, not ritually impure, not tummy. As we know, vessels can be tummy as well. And in order to make sure that the vessel is not tummy, the vessel that you can use for the carbon Pesach, you will have brought it to the mikveh. So if you find a knife and it looks like it's something that, that's ready for shechting, you're allowed to assume that it was not, um, that it's not tummy, that it was taken to the mikvah. However, that's only true if it's a shechting knife. What about if you find a cleaver, a, a bone breaking knife? Can you assume it's tahar? Or would you say, no, the owner wouldn't have taken it to the mikvah in, prep- in preparation for the carbon pesach because you, you don't need this kind of knife for a carbon pesach. So that conversation will lead us to show us whether or not you're allowed to break a bone of the chagiga. Because if you're not allowed to break the bone of the Chagiga, that would be true. You don't need the cleaver. But if you are allowed to break the bone of the Chagiga, so then you do need the cleaver, not for the carbon Pesach, but you need it for another carbon for the Chagiga. So that's the logic of this next proof. Toshima Kamini. Sakin Shenimtseis Ba'arba'asar, you find the knife on the 14th day, Shachabami Ad, you're allowed to shecht it, and you don't have to take it first to the mikvah to make sure that it's ritually pure. Bishlosha, however, if you find it on the 13th day, then you don't know. Maybe the owner intended to use it for the carbon Pesach, but he still intended to bring it to the mikvah later that day. And he dropped it on the way to the mikvah. And so you don't know that whether or not it's already gone to the mikvah. So you have to go back and toivel it, take it to the mikvah just in case it's tummy. Kupitz. However, if it's a cleaver, a knife that you could use for shechting, but typically you don't. It's more like for breaking bones. So So even if you find it on the 14th, for sure on the 13th, but even if you find it on the 14th, you can't assume it's been to the mikvah. You have to assume that it's not been to the mikvah and you have to take it. Mani. Now, whose opinion is this? Ilema Rabbanan. Is it the Rabbanan? Maishra Saka Namatvil. Why would you shech the knife? The Chazil Pesach. Because you need it for the carbon Pesach. Well, Kupitz Nami Chazil Chagiga. The, the cleaver, you needed for the Chagiga offering. So you would have taken that to the mikvah too. So the, the, this brysa that makes a distinction between a cleaver and a shechting knife clearly is not the opinion of the Chachamim. It must be the opinion of Ben Tema. Because according to the Chachamim, you, you need a cleaver to be kosher just for the other part, carbonus of, of, of Pesach. Not of Pesach, of, of the Chagiga. El the Ben Tema. Must be the opinion of Ben Tema. 
Ushmaminon, from here we can deduce, Yesh Bamishim Shvira Setsam, you're not allowed to break a bone. And that's why we assume you're not gonna break the you're not gonna bring the cleaver to the mikveh because you don't need it. You don't need it for the Pesach, because you're not allowed to break the bone. You don't need it for the Chagiga either, because you're not allowed to break the bone. The shechting knife you need, so you would take it to the mikveh. The cleaver you wouldn't. So that proves that even the Chagiga, you're not allowed to break the bone. So Gemara says, Loy Loy We can say that this is even the opinion of the Rabbanan who say that the Chagiga, it, 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 you're allowed to break the bones. However, you don't always bring a Chagiga. As we saw in our Mishnah, the three exemptions, three times you wouldn't bring it. On Shabbos, you don't bring a Chagiga. So maybe that's the case here. The reason this person would not have taken the mikvah, the, the knife to the mikvah, the cleaver to the mikvah, is because it, th- there's no need for it because there's no Chagiga at all. There, there is only the one offering the carbon Pesach, and you're not allowed to break its bones. Wait, but we already learned in that same rice at the end says, and if it was on a fr- uh, if the Erev Yantiv was on a Shabbos, you're not allowed to, you know, you don't have to uh, um, um, assume that uh, that uh, it was tummy, and you're allowed to shech with it right away. And on the 15th as well, you can shech right away. Nimtzes, Kupitz, Kashura Lasakin, and if the knife, the shechting knife and the cleaver are tied together, harei kasakin. Then it also counts. You can assume that the cleaver also went to the mikvah. So michalal from the fact that the end is talking about on a on, when erev yontif is on a shabbos, michalal the reishal abashamis must be the first part is not talking about shabbos, meaning it's a regular weekday and you should be bringing the the chagig offer. Ve'ela. So rather, what are we going to say? Shabbat and uh, And now we turn to Ayin Ahmed base seventy B. And it must be that it's talking about that you have a small a, a small group. Therefore, you have a lot of carbon pesach to eat. And you don't need the chagig offering because you don't because you have enough meat in your lamb for pesach in order to eat the carbon pesach while satiated. So Gemara says minayadi on the thirteenth day. How are you going to know that? Even the fourteenth day, how are you going to know it? For, for sure, the thirteenth day. How are you going to know how many people you're going to have? Because as we learned earlier. Up until when you shech the carbon Pesach, people can join your group, leave your group. So even though that right now you only have, let's say, uh, 10 people in your group and you think, you know what, I better have, a, 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 um, I, I'm going to have so much meat, I don't need a Chagiga. But you don't know that some family is not going to show up and say, hey, can we join your, car, your, your Seder and eat part of your carbon Pesach? And all of a sudden you went from 10 to 30 and you're not going to have enough meat. So everybody is sort of at least... A, 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 um, thinking that they may need a, a, a Chagiga offering. So why would you not take the cleaver to the mikveh as well, just in case? So rather it must be that, you're right, it's the, it's the third exemption. The exemption is that the community is tummy. And since the community is tummy, you would not bring the uh, Chagiga um, on the 14th day. Wait, so if Sef Miniadi, so how still, how do you know that the community is going to be tummy? How do you know that on this day everybody's going to be tummy? Must be the Misnasi, that the king or the prince died, and everybody's going to go to that funeral and take part. So everybody's going to be tummy, and therefore you know that everybody's tummy. So the Misnasi Amos, when did he die? Ilay with the Misbashloshasa, did he die on the 13th day of Nisan, a day before Pesach? So why did he take the knife to the mikvah? You're saying, oh, he took the knife to the mikvah, but not the cleaver. If the carbon is going to be, the Pesach is going to be tummy anyhow, and everybody touching the carbon Pesach is going to be tummy, and the Kohen or anybody that's shechting the animal is going to be tummy. So why did you take the knife to the mikvah? So it must be that the Nasi died on the 14th day. So then we're back to our first question. So on the 13th day, why didn't you take the cleaver to the mikvah? So if you took the knife to the mikvah, why didn't you take the, the cleaver to the mikvah? So Gemara says, no, it's Richa, we need it in this case. The Nasi the, the, the prince or the king was, was ebbing away. He was dying on the 13th day of Nisan. We don't know. He may hold out into Yantif, maybe not. So everybody's in, in this upheaval. They're not sure whether or not the carbon Pesach this year is going to be brought when everybody's tummy. But at this point, nobody died yet. And therefore, uh, uh, they're, everybody's still in a state of purity, of tar. So Sakin, the Chatzveka, the knife, which is only a single doubt, 
will the Nasi die or not? And, and, and they're going to be Tommy. So they, so, so they, they bring it um, to the mikvah just in case the Nasi doesn't die and they'll be able to bring the carbon Pesach when everybody's pure. Makbila, so he takes it to the mikvah. Kupitz. However, the cleaver, number one, maybe it's going to be in a state of tumor. And I don't even know if I'm going to need a Chagiga, right? Kupitz, the trace making. So there's, there's a double question here, right? There's, um, uh, so therefore I'm not, maybe, maybe he's, he's, he's uh, going to die. And uh, there's going to be no Chagiga at all. Um, uh, um, and, and on the, uh, 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 besides for the, the, the Chagiga, the 15th day, and besides, I may have a large, uh, uh, a small group, and I'm going to have a lot of meat, and so I'm not going to need a Chagiga. So he's not sure whether he's going to need a Chagiga at all. And even if he needs a Chagiga, I may not be allowed to bring a Chagiga because maybe we're all going to be tummy because the Nasi is going to die. So there's a double doubt. And so he doesn't take the cleaver. He only takes the knife. Trey Sveiki, loy matbalo. Tanya Rabbi Huda ben Durtai Pirish. Rabbi Huda ben Durtai, out of, out, out of a, a um, uh, disagreement with the Chachamim, he, di- he, he left the group of the Chachamim and went to live in the south. Who with Durtai ben He and Durtai, his son. And he lived in the south, far away, so he should be exempt of the carbon Pesach. Omar, he said, Because he disagreed, he said, just like you bring the carbon Pesach on Shabbos, so too you bring the Chagiga on Shabbos. And if I'm here, and this that year was was uh, Shabbos was the 14th day of Nisan, and he was concerned if he's around and he brings the carbon Pesach and not the Chagiga, and what happens if Eliyahu and Avi comes and says, hey, why did you guys not bring the car- the Chagiga? Why did you only bring the carbon Pesach? What will the what will we respond to them? To Mahani al He says, I'm, I'm, I I question the two great leaders of our generation, Shemayev Avtalian, Shem Chachamim Gedolim. They're very wise people, V'Darshanim Gedolim, and great scholars and teachers. And why would they not teach this halacha that the Chagiga comes even and it supersedes Shabbos, which our Mishnah says it doesn't. I'm a rab, my time ben Durtai. So Rav said, what is the logic? What is the basis for Ben Durtai's opinion where he says that it does supersede Shabbos? Because it says, it, there's a verse that's peculiar. We know that the halacha is that a carbon Pesach can only come from a lamb or a goat. And yet it talks, in, in, in Devarim it says that you will slaughter, you will bring a carbon Pesach for Hashem, your God, son of sheep or goat, ubakar, or of cattle. That's not true. A Pesach can only come either from sheep or goats. So it must be when it says Tzone Bakar means two different Kabbalas. You will bring to Hashem your God for Pesach a Tzone, sheep or goat. That's the Pesach. Bakar is a Chagiga. And a cow, a calf for a Chagiga. And it calls it Pesach, meaning it all has to be brought on that same day with the Pesach. So you see that it is incumbent to be done even when it's, uh, 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 even on a Shabbos, it'll supersede Shabbos. Amar Avashi, Saravashi said, wait, why are we even working to try and understand the opinion of Bender Tai? He excluded himself from the Chachamim. He moved to the South and separated himself. We don't have to. Uh, understand uh, his opinion. Vanan time the perushim nekuv and nifrush. We have to explain the opinions of those that leave us. Elakula and the verse. What about this verse? That's not the meaning of that verse. Elakra lechadar of Nachman udasa. That verse is coming for the teaching that Rav Nachman taught. Namar Rav Nachman or Rabbi Baravu. In the name of Rabbi Baravu, he taught. Minayin lamosah pesach shakar shlom. How do we know this rule? And we talked about this many times earlier. That a carbon pesach not on the fourteenth day. So. You forgot to bring the carbon Pesach on the 14th day. You have a leftover carbon. You brought, you dedicated one and then joined a different group. Whatever it may be, you now have a lamb that was dedicated as a carbon Pesach and it's leftover. It's not, it's already uh, after Pesach. What do you do with it? Shekar of Shlomit. How do we know that you bring it as a peace offering, as a Shlomit? Shenema for it says, This verse, as it says, you'll bring the Pesach for Hashem, sheep and cattle. Now, as we ask, does Pesach allow to become from cattle? Can you bring a, a calf as you come from Pesach? You cannot. It's only allowed to come from sheep and goats. 
Ella Moisa Pesach Yehei, rather it's talking about the leftovers of a carbon Pesach, not the leftover food, but a lamb that had been dedicated, that you're going to bring it as an offering that's allowed to be brought of cattle and, 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 and sheep and goat. Varabana, uh, and, and that's the, 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 uh, the idea, that's what it means. The Pesach, that's leftover, that's remained beyond Pesach, you're going to bring it as an offering that's allowed to be uh, sheep cat, and cattle. And what is that? That's a shlem. Now, what's the reason of our Mishnah that disagrees with the teaching that we just said in the name of uh, Ben Durtai, uh, 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 Yehuda Ben Durtai, that said that, that it should supersede Shabbos? Why does our Mishnah say it does not supersede Shabbos? Why did they say it doesn't supersede Shabbos? After all, it is a, a communal offering, so, so it should supersede Shabbos. The Pasuk says, The Torah says in regards to the Chag of Sukkot, it says, and you will bring it as a Chag, a, a holiday offering, for seven days. Now, Sukkot has an eighth day as well. So why does it say seven days? Shiva Siyam and seven days in the year. Shiva, seven, Shemayin Ahavu. It's eight days. So we see that every Sukkot is going to have at least uh, one Shabbos in it. So you're never going to have more than seven days of Chagiga. Therefore, uh, it says seven days. So from there, we can see that 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 uh, uh, the Chagiga only comes on a weekday, not on Shabbos. And that's why we're going to say that it supersedes, uh, that it doesn't supersede Shabbos because the Torah says you only bring it for seven days. Now, Kiyasa Ravin, when Ravin came... And as we said, Ravin was one of those that went from Eretz Yisrael to Babel and back, and they would uh, uh, cross-pollinate the teachings from one the academy to the other, from the uh, Eretz Yisrael academy to, to Babel and vice versa. So when he came from Eretz Yisrael to Babel, Amin, he said, That I said in front of my teachers, you know, sometimes you only find uh, six days. So why did the Torah say seven Sometimes if the first day is Sukkot is Shabbos, the last day will also be Shabbos, and you'd only have six days to bring a Chagigah. Amar Abaye. So Abaye said, Oven Tichla. Poor Oven, he, he lost his children in his lifetime. And uh, either it means, and therefore he, 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 he didn't remember his teaching, or not having a solid teaching is like losing a child, whatever the meaning that Abaye was saying. So Lema Ki is he, is he, why would he ask such a question? It's never possible to have eight days of, uh, 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 without a Shabbos. But you can have eight days of Sukkot with only one Shabbos. Shiva, Asya, Barev Shanam. In fact, most years you're going to have it that way. So what's his question? So uh, that was uh, his response to that question. Tomorrow we'll continue with this idea of the Shalmei Simcha and the Chagiga, the offerings that come on Yatav. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Shavuot to everyone.